It couldn't be done, yeah, you thought I might as well I'm Frank Rivoli, local singer-songwriter and musician Play all around the area from Lake Porter County and Midwest and Chicago, Michigan uh, Sometimes travel a little bit farther than that, but mostly local The world isn't fair, but I I've always been infatuated with music. I actually uh, was prompted by the new music teacher at Coling Elementary School back in the day when I went there to join choir, which I did. Um, that was the only year I did choir, and I was um, I did the Christmas solo of uh, I was Elvis, and I remember getting a standing ovation from all the parents and grandparents out there, and it was uh, something that always stuck with me. I liked to entertain. After that, I just always wanted to be in front of a crowd and entertain. Hey. Although after that, I focused more on baseball. You know, didn't really perform that much, but I uh, went to college and got hurt. So after my baseball career ended, I started uh, playing guitar. I wanted to either learn a guitar or piano, and luckily one of my fraternity brothers was selling his guitar. So I bought it off of him, and then I started uh, learning how to play songs off YouTube. And then from there, I started writing songs, and then from there, I said, well, let me try to make a couple bucks at a bar playing, and look at me now, I'm eight years later, <laughs> I'm doing it all the time, so. I play everything from classic rock to current pop uh, when I cover stuff. My favorite is 90s Alternative. I'm a big Dave Matthews fan. And then I have a lot of originals too. I probably have about 75 originals right now. Um, so I like to play those as much as I can. It could be me just strumming the guitar a little bit, hearing a cool sound and whatever it makes me think of. I'll uh, try to grow up from there and then write a song, uh, you know, to that sound that I, or sound and feel that I hear. Uh, could be a happy feeling, could be a sad feeling, whatever it may be. Cause I am not like you You can stay with the crowd But I make my own rules When I taste lights I like to get my ideas and thoughts out there On my personal original stuff like that But when you start to play live um, The entertainment value I just like making people happy And then um, the camaraderie of playing with other musicians And just letting it grow and see there, There's a special level, a special vibe that um, you know, they say music is the universal language. It's, it, you know, it breaks all barriers of, you know, if I speak English and you speak Spanish or Italian or whatever, and I don't understand what you're saying, we can play a song and almost feel what, what, what we're getting at, right? So it brings everybody together in multiple ways. So I, I, I love it. Even on the wall, you should have lent a helping man instead of wishing that I fall when I say. COVID-19 definitely had a hit for a lot of people. I mean, from local to national to worldwide, right? Um, locally, it's been, it was very tough early on, especially for, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our friends in the, um, you know, music family. Um, you know, everybody took a hit. Um, so that's not good. But then also you bring it back to music being the universal language. Um, you know, you take away that ability to not only create music and entertain people, but for people to get together and enjoy, you know, the social aspect of being a human, you know, it leads to a lot of depression. And I know a lot of people have been depressed. Um, so that's definitely a big impact. But moving forward after kind of the initial scare, you know, where things kind of started opening up, the summer turned around, um, you know, I give a lot of respect to the venues that still allowed musicians to come in and play and allow people to listen and, you know, be at their tables at the restaurant and still enjoy it. So um, I think it's coming back around where it's heading now with the winter and, uh, you know, moving forward. You know, I really don't know. I hope with uh, the vaccine that just came out, it makes people a little bit feel a little bit more safe. Um, and allows establishments to kind of get back to what we would say is the old normal. The monkey in my mind is jumping right on to the thought of me being that boy that's gonna get old over For me, the first thing I wanted to do was I was going kind of off the Dave Matthews model, um, have, a, have a record label that was kind of my own that I can release my own music on, you know, and there's there's obviously advantages to being incorporated as a business, as a musician. And then not only that, I wanted to 
um, in the future use that to help friends and other musicians, you know, work through releasing stuff if they needed help. Uh, so luckily I've already been able to do that uh, once or twice and uh, hope to do more of it, you know. But it's really cool and the reason I came up with Fire Tree Records, it's not that I'm like a, you know, an extremist religious person or anything, but uh, it comes from the idea of the, the st story of Moses when he went up and he saw the burning bush and, he, you know, he realized God told him you got to go lead lead the people right so that was what he had to do that was his highest calling in life well I feel music is like my highest calling no matter how far I go um, it's just something about it that really draws me so um, I originally was gonna call it burning bush records but I thought fire tree records was better so I changed it to that <laughs> Brian Mundy, my lead guitarist, we did a, um, starting back in February, we started recording a live um, acoustic session from Region Buzz 219, which is uh, another music family friend, uh, Nick Kazonis, he runs that studio. And uh, what we wanted to do, Brian and I have been playing together since I started, since I got back from college and started playing around at open mics. Him and I have some, you know, backtrack connections where he was good friends with my brother-in-law, he grew up with my cousins, so I had heard about him, he had heard about me. We finally got together at open mics, or at an open mic at JJ Kelly's one night, which I think open mics are great. Everybody, especially if you're new, you should go out. If you're an older artist, it's great to get you know together with everybody and just jam different vibes, different songs. But um, with that being said, uh, him and I have been playing for seven years. We have a cool, really sound, you know, a cool sound together, but we don't have anything on tape. Just wanna get it in, ooh, ah. Just wanna eat it up, ooh, ah. Just wanna get it in, ooh, ah. Just wanna eat it. Up. So back in February, him and I started to record like a live live session of five songs. We started in February, COVID hit, so then we couldn't do anything. And then uh, I think at the end of July, we finally finished the last four songs um, and just released it this last Tuesday on December 15th. So you can check that out on Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff, get CDs uh, from our website, stuff like that. But moving forward, I would like to get at least 10 songs out for 2021. That would be great. So full band versions. Like I said, I got a lot of a lot of original songs and it just drives me nuts that they just sit in a pile of papers and you know, it's like I wanna get these out to everybody. Just wanna get it in Just wanna eat it up. You can go to frankervillemusic.com and then also Frankerville Music on Facebook, Instagram, and then uh, the original stuff that we've recorded and put out, uh, both with Brian and then stuff that I've done before that um, is on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, all that stuff, a Amazon Music, just Go down the line, of course. There's millions of them now, so 